we're going to be going over how you can add validation to your GraphQL resolvers. And we're going to be doing this with decorators and a way that is built in to type GraphQL. Now, before we dive into the details of how that works, we're going to start off with a few things that you guys suggested in the comments. And even the creator of type GraphQL chimed in with a few great suggestions to improve what we've already started on. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a library called TS node dev. Now this is something that replaces uh, node daemon and is uh, pretty much an upgrade uh, when we use it with TypeScript. So what this is going to do is it's going to use TS node underneath the hood and it's not going to restart it entirely every single time. Uh, so we're going to install this and basically the end result of adding this is it's going to restart faster. So I actually tried this out today for the first time and it was really smooth. So I'm happy to add it in. Um, and so we're just going to say instead of that right there, we're going to say TS node dev. Uh, and again, we can pass in any flags that we want to. And then you can see here the other flags we can pass in that this adds. Um, I'm just going to add the respawn one. And we actually do want it to transpile still, so we're not going to add that flag. Um, and so now the startup time is just going to be a little bit faster every single time we make a change. So I can delete that, save it, and we can see it just restarted just a lot quicker than with no daemon. All right, so that was change number one. Change two is to our TS config. So we can uh, add ES module interrupt. And we'll say true. And also I'm going to turn allow synthetic default imports to true as well. So when I turn both these on, what we can do now is get rid of the import as syntax and just import regularly. Um, and we can do the same thing in the register resolver for bcrypt. Uh, and then lastly, there is a type GraphQL way of adding the field resolver directly on the object type. Uh, so what I mean by that is here's an average rating field. We added a name, which is a field resolver for the user. Instead of putting it in a resolver like this, uh, we can actually add it to our object type over here, our user object type. So we can paste this in. Now for us, we can get rid of this part. Um, we can say name here. We don't have any arguments, so we can get rid of those. And here we're gonna return a string. And then the logic here is gonna be the same logic that we have over here. And we can get the root just like we were doing over there. And now we can just get rid of the name. And we can get rid of the name here. And we don't need to have user right there if we don't want to. So we'll give that a save. And so now we can still grab the name field off of the, uh, the user type. Uh, but now we have this built-in function or this really just getter function here uh, that does it. So this is a little bit nicer so you can see that it's a get function in the object type. So this is pretty nice. Uh, and in the docs, they recommend uh, going with this style if it's simple. And if you have more complex uh, types or fields that you want to resolve, say you want to do some async work in it, go ahead and put that in the resolver itself. All right, so those are the changes. Um, let's go ahead and get started with adding arguments and checking the validity of them. So to do this in TypeGraphQL, we can use something called class validators. And so what we can do is we can create a class and add tags or decorators to them, specifying any kind of conditions we want it to meet. Uh, so to start off, we need to install this. So I'm going to say class validator. Um, and then we're ready to begin. So with our register over here, this is what we want to validate is these four fields right here. So uh, as far as folder structure goes, I want to create a new file and I want to put basically this into a separate file, the basically logic or the validation logic of this. So I'm trying out a new folder structure called the fractal pattern, uh, which I read an article about the other day. I'll link it below if you want to check it out. But how it's going to work is we call this thing register. We're going to create a folder called register. 
inside of that, I'm going to call it register input.ts. And so inside of this, we're going to create an input type like so. So I'm going to call it register input, and it's going to have the same fields as we're using right here. So you'll notice that we are specifying a input type decorator. So this will create a input GraphQL type. So I'm going to paste this in and we can just change all this to uh, a, let's do it like that, to field decorators. And we can get rid of the commas as well. And I'm going to drop this to a new line. And we just need to import this. Now, before we even add any validation real quick, we can just see what this looks like. Uh, so we've created this register input type. I now want to apply it over here. So So we're going to have a single uh, variable or single argument that's going to be of the type register input. And maybe I'm just going to call the argument input here, or I could call it data. And inside of here, we're going to have the email, first name, last name, and password. So I'm going to start this back up. And then if we go to GraphQL Playground, we can see what this looks like. All right, so it's mad at me. And the reason why is because we have this data which we need to pass in and the data is an object which has those keys. Well, actually these keys that we need to pass in. So, so now we have a single input type and we can say data like so and we can pass in it like this. And that should be email. Actually, no first name. There you go. So this is the correct syntax now for it. Uh, but we haven't added the validation yet. So we can now add validation to this by using the class validator library. So if you go check out the readme for the class validator library, you can see all the different decorators that we can add. But basically what we do is we're going to deal with mostly the length decorator um, to start off with. So we're going to add a length requirement. So I'm going to say it can be between uh, 1 and 30. And I'm going to say the same thing about the last name. Now, I'm not actually sure what exactly a good first name and last name length would be. Maybe it's better to put like 255 uh, or something. Uh, as for email, I'm going to use the is email decorator to make sure it's a valid email. And then I'm not going to set a requirement on the length of the password since we're going to uh, hash it anyway. All right, so this is how we can do at least some simple validation using decorators. So now what the result of this is, is if we don't meet this, so for example, the first name is just empty here. We can run it. We're now going to get an argument validation error. Now you'll notice in the response here, it's not very helpful what went wrong. We can see some stuff in the extensions, but that's not actually going to be sent to the user. They're just going to see argument validation error. Uh, so the way we can get a better version or better error message is by doing this, by formatting the error. And type GraphQL gives us a function we can pass in that will handle it for us. So we're going to go to index.ts over here, and we're going to say format error. And this is on our Apollo server instance. And we're going to pass in the type, type, oops, type GraphQL, not type form the format argument validation error, we're just gonna pass in here. So now we get error messages sent back, at least with more information. So I can see right here that the first name can must be longer than equal to one character, cool. And again, we can pass in over here, I believe probably as the third argument I imagine. Yep, we can pass in our message if we want a custom message so 
I'm not even going to bother with the custom message. I'm fine with just the default one right now. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to add is uh, we have these three kind of basic decorators that we added. There's a ton more to choose from. And also you can add your own custom decorators. So that's what I wanted to go through real quick is adding a custom one. So one piece of validation that we particularly need for this is we want the email to be unique. So we could just catch an error whenever we try creating the user, or we could create a custom decorator that checks it for us. So we're going to try creating a custom decorator for it. And uh, I went to the docs for uh, this, the class validator, to see how you did this. And they actually have an example where they create a is user already exists decorator. So that's exactly what we're doing, except we want to do it for the email. So I'm going to copy this and I'll link this uh, below in the description if you want to copy this and check out the readme as well. Uh, so I'm going to create it in here. I'm going to say is email already used. And we'll paste this in. Or I guess already exist is a better one. And I'm just going to copy what I called this and we're going to rename this. Um, all right, so now we can rename this as well is email. Um, and so this is the name of the decorator. So is email exist? So we can actually call it over here. Or is email already exist? And then the logic to check whether it is valid or not is in this validate function up here. So let's go ahead for us. Uh, we can get rid of this. I guess we're not really using any arguments. It's going to be an email, which is a string. And I'm going to say user dot find one. And we're going to say where and we're going to say email. So this is going to find a user by the email. And then we're going to check if we get a user. If we uh, don't get a user, well, I guess it's the inverse. If we find a user, then we return false because uh, it's bad. Otherwise, we return two. All right, so now the result of this, we can give this a try. This should now validate to check whether this already exists in the database. Uh, so I don't know if we already have a Bob 2 yet. I can't remember if I created him. I think I did in the last video. So let's run this and see what happens. Um, does it tell me my error? Constraints is already exists constraint. Okay, so it looks like uh, this right here. It took the name of that as the key for the error right here. And I think in their example, we need to pass in a message here message email already in use so we'll run that and we get email already in use as our message here uh, so now we have a custom decorator checking and we can create as many as we want of those right to check our uh, arguments so that is another way to add validation to your your graphql arguments for your mutations and your queries is creating input types and adding decorators based off of the class validator library. And we can even create our own custom ones if you like.